had an initial meeting actually in, in Kia's office, and, you know, kind of that seven years ago. And the people we were with us at the time, we were still going two hours later because there was just an instant spark of what possibly could be achieved. And it was really a three phase project. It was the first that was, was well underway, which was to create a community sports pavilion on site at the school. Um, the school's part of an academy's trust, Twyford Academy's trust, which really try and specialise in raising the standards, not only for sport, but for, for the arts as well. And William Perkins was the base for the sporting arenas. So the, the pavilion went in, which is fantastic. Great support from Sport England, London Marathon Trust and many other um, funders, particularly the Ealing Council as well, that really made the, the project thrive. Um, and then the second phase of that was the outdoor sporting facilities for the national sport. So an artificial turf pitch for football and, and, a, and a wicket uh, pitch for, for, for cricket as well as nets going in as well. And then the real challenge was to activate that. It was lovely creating the facilities, but we really had to make it thriving for the community and for the young people at the school. And I think over the last three years, we've really proven the demand and the need for that. And that's what sparked the vision of Kira and I getting back together and saying well wouldn't this be wonderful if it wasn't just the summer months of seeing all these wonderful people using the facilities how could we create that as an indoor venue so we we sparked the idea of of transforming the, the sports hall into into what we know now as the the Will Slack Cricket Centre and um, making it cricket specific brand new flooring new netting a fantastic new lighting and 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 also the massive addition of technology going in there with, with the state-of-the-art cameras which is going to transform the way we help people develop as well as how we can identify talent moving forward. I'm, uh, I'm super proud it's been a long journey I've known Katie for some time now I think we started uh, with uh, external facilities we had some support from the ECB we wanted cricket to be alive in state schools we want to create a hub for cricket in the community so we worked on getting the external facilities uh, sorted out and from that then we began the journey of trying to sort of uh, get the money together and get the support behind the indoor centre. The whole project has really been a great example of how partnerships work that, that sit behind a really strong aligned vision that creates the why for the project. Um, to start off with we had obviously ECB have been incredibly supportive when we shared our vision of what we could do to open up the facility for the community and really how we could use the space to amplify opportunities for what are underrepresented groups, particularly women and girls uh, and players with a disability. They were completely in right from the start and the support, the technical support we've had from people like Dan Musson, uh, Duncan James has it, just been phenomenal. Um, the partnership that ECB have with Sport England has really come to the fore as well because Sport England have been incredibly important, not just to this project, but for cricket as a whole with the investment portfolio that's going, that's going in around the country. They've come in with the funding which was fantastic and, and matched ECB's contribution. And then finally we had a really important part of the investment Investment, which was um, from Will Slack's Young Cricketers Development Trust, which is really a legacy programme and a legacy project for Will Slack, a great cricketer for Middlesex, someone who's a truly inspirational and really champions what can be achieved. It's a full pitch, found the gap for wide of mid on. Such a chase in it, but has to give it up, so four good runs to uh, Will Slack. Moves on to 36. Slack on uh, 38. Short, hooked away down to uh, deep square leg. That's going to beat the fielder and uh, over the ropes for four. Shot. It's a good batting strip out there. He was one of the loveliest men you're ever likely to meet. Um, and I remember when he first came in, he was, he was very quiet, but he had one of those very infectious smiles. Um, and he was one of those just characters that just didn't have any problems with anybody. Yeah, he was just uh, well liked by everybody. He was, he was, he was quite quiet, but once he, once he got into things, he was, he was, uh, he was, a, he was a very lovely and lovable character. That's all I can say, really. Uh, who, who would do anything for anybody? He was just such a lovely bloke to have around. And in fact, I got to know him 
uh, mainly through going abroad with them to New Zealand on two or three occasions and uh, got to know him. We both played cricket in Auckland and he was so well, highly respected and, and uh, well looked upon out there by the, the senior players and particularly the junior players because he had so much time for, for youngsters and he wanted to show. And you could never upset the old boy. He just, whatever, whether it was Imran Khan bowling 100 miles an hour at MacArthur Aru, he was very good, always a very good player of quick bowling but he'd always have that lovely ear-to-ear -ear grin on his face. <laughs> he would be so, so proud um, to have something like this there so the kids could actually have a chance like he did because, again, he was very aware of the background he came from, as, as a lot of us were, and, and he really uh, would be so, so proud that, that kids from all races and colour and creed could actually go in there, use the facilities with his name above the door um, because... Um, he was a special person um, and uh, he was a very special person in the Middlesex team. When we were lucky enough to open William Perkin as the Twyford Academies Trust, we wanted it to be a, a kind of a shining beacon in the community. We were given 25, I think, million pounds to build the school and we wanted the school to, to serve as a 24-7 community asset. Um, and we have we really have um, made that a, a sort of major major pledge of what our role is in the community. So that said, in terms of the cricket, well, obviously, we talked about all of the opportunities that Middlesex are taking to open it up to the community. Uh, we've uh, we've in, in, in supported by Middlesex. We're lucky to have Saj Mahmood work with us, um, and he has a huge passion for um, opening up access for children to be able to um, have elite-level coaching. So as well as needing the resources to, to mirror those of public schools, you also need the, the quality of the, the coaching and the provision. And so SAD just set up uh, an elite A-level cricket academy, which allows the students to benefit from, this, from the school, the academic success of the school, with their A-level learning taking place in the morning. Um, and then that allows him to have this sort of concerted time with them to develop their cricketing skills, abilities, aptitudes um, and understanding of the wider impl implications of the game. So that is an offer which we believe will rival the sort of coaching that students who are given bursaries to go to the wonderful public schools who support cricket brilliantly. Um, but they, this will give them a programme uh, to to be be proud of and to really develop their cricketing and academic skills and that's for the whole of West London so Middlesex are helping us target the students to come to that so that's one way we think that they'll uh, benefit we're also running lots and lots of primary school cricket um, access opportunities because actually if whatever we've done with the centre which is fantastic and and you know thank you to all of the people that have funded that not least the Will Slack um, trustees who without them starting off with that seed funding it would never have happened but actually if we don't get cricket more accessible in primary schools and if we don't use this as a catalyst to improve the sport that that can take place in primary schools actually cricket will miss out because um the transition from softball to hardball means that large numbers of very talented kids are lost at that at that point so I really think it'll act as a catalyst for primary school students we'll uh, open it up to all of the local clubs Middlesex are running f free access to uh, women who are interested in learning a little bit about the game and so it's open up for the community there and all of the wonderful cricket clubs in Ealing will be able to use it at a slightly reduced uh, community rate as part of their um, winter coaching or summer coaching opportunity uh, first of all, facility is amazing. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it after Easter and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the, the, we've got some bowling machines, we've got a great floor in the nets, the cameras that are in place. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge impact to the players that we have here. Um, and not just the players, just the students. Um, they'll come in and they'll be interested in what's this new indoor, what facilities have we got, what cameras have we got in the back. And I think we'll just be able to engage a lot more kids uh, to then get interested in cricket and we can obviously get them better. Um, facilities like this, mate, I think, I think is, uh, is brilliant. It's, it's the best indoor facility I've seen. I've been to a lot, of, a lot of good indoor facilities around the country. I was in a state school when I was growing up and we didn't have, we didn't have, 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 have an indoor school, uh, an indoor hall, um, let alone facilities with nets and cameras and bowling machines. And, um, so it definitely would have accelerated my development as a player. Um, but mate, the community that, that will engage in this facility will be 
uh, will, will, will use this and benefit hugely from this. Uh, and obviously that huge partnership we have in Middlesex Cricket now, um, I think is amazing. Uh, just to interest uh, the local community and, and, and the young cricketers coming through, I, th I, think, I think it's an absolutely fantastic thing. I mentioned Dan Russell, he's been fantastic, the technical expertise he, he brought. And he very quickly checked us and said, look, your enthusiasm and passion and the funding that you've got in place is brilliant, but you need some expertise. Um, he put us in contact with, with Jonathan Platt, uh, our architect for the project, has really helped us drive the project forward. Um, he's been fantastic. Um, the many, many contractors and subcontractors that's made it work through really difficult, challenging periods, and that would be that global forces that, that we're seeing at the moment, delays with the pandemic, supply chain issues, not to mention that the, the indoor centre is obviously on the second floor, so just getting materials up there to start with, is, we, we've certainly not made it easy for ourselves. Um, but I think that's what's been the beauty of this, you know, we've, we've learnt along the way, so many people have been willing to get involved. Sue from, Sue from the school School, brilliant project management. Um, a huge focus and thank you must go to, to Jim Morris, um, facilities manager at the school. He has been the glue that's kept us all moving, which has been fantastic. And personally for my team, Ian Moore's just provides some excellent project management uh, and expertise. And I think again, I think you know the, the board at Middlesex have been behind the vision from the start. The, the Twyfus Academy Trust directors completely aligned. Um, and an ECB around the inspiring generation strategy, and and I and I truly believe that this centre will will help us create a gender balance to cricket, which we want to do, and and, and get many people picking up a bat and ball.